Hey, well, uh, hello, VC. Uh, Ron Bogre here, Rockin' Ronnie. Hey, thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate you all tuning in. And we've got some, uh, some very interesting things to talk about today. You know, we've got the Jethro Tull limited edition 45 RPM box set. And there's a lot going on right here on this record. And then we've got this digital, this Alan Parsons. And this one, she's got the digital mastering on it. But what, what does all that mean? Uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for my all my subscribers tuning in. Really appreciate it. If it's your first time, you know what, what I do on my channel is I kind of compare record pressings because there's a lot of sound on some of these records and some of them there's not so much sound on it. So I want my stereo to sound the best it can. So that's why I try to get a better sounding record because boy, is that easy, the easy way. I can spend $20 on a record and it'll make my stereo sound like buying a $5,000 amp, you know? Where's the, where, where, what's a lot easier doing that, isn't it? A lot cheaper too, you know. So okay, let's talk about this Alan Parsons record. Now this is the digital, this is the reissue. This is the Japanese reissue of the Alan Parsons first record. And this is obviously the first issue because this is on the gate, this is the gatefold. And it's got that paper inside here with the book. And you know that's the first edition obviously. Now this is the reissue. It's not a gatefold. And uh, I don't see a year on here. 76, but yeah, this was that's when this came out anyway, 76. So you can't always go by that. Yeah, you can't go by that. But obviously this is a reissue because it's got this digital thing on here. Okay, bottom line, when I compared them, and what do you think happened? Yeah, you all know what happened. This is nowhere near as good as that other one. This is digital. And, you know, when they made these records now, all the record companies that switched over to digital, they had a digital source, they had digital mixing boards, all that stuff is digital. And that's, you know, that's kind of what happened with, I think, Atlantic and the uh, Led Zeppelin re reissues. I think the, because they've got so much money invested in digital and all their setups are, are digital, all their, you know, their, their boards are, the state-of-the-art digital mastering boards, all that type of stuff, it was just a lot easier for them to digitize that tape and then they can use all their fancy equipment that they've got, that they think is so fancy. But it doesn't give you that breath of life the way that classic record, when they reissued it now, they got the master tape, they got, they went back, and I can't say for sure now, because I know like with DCC, when they made their stuff, Steve Hoffman and them, they went and got, you know, those old Ampex reel-to-reels when you're talking about these old, old, older records now, those, all those, uh, the cutting lays were tube, the reel-to-reel -reel tape recorders were tube, you know, the mastering boards were tube. So if you want to recreate to, uh, that sound, because we're talking about some really good sounding stuff here, they went back and they got, bought, got all that stuff, and they refurbished it and brought it up. You know, made it sound, took some of the old electrolytic caps and stuff out and we fixed that stuff, and the records sound phenomenal. Now what Classic Records did, and I can't get into the whole, uh, I don't know everything about Classic Records, how they did, but you know, they're just a startup company. The man sold box sets of, uh, was it uh, RCA Living Presence? He went and got the catalog and he re repressed a lot of those. That's why it's called Classic Records, because they started making classical music records. And he, got a, he made a bunch of box sets, I think 5,000 box sets or so, or a thousand, I can't remember the exact number, but he got, he got enough, he got, he sold them a pre-order and he got enough money, I think it was around $50,000 from the pre-orders to actually start making records because he didn't have that kind of money. So that's a really cool story. So now when you get a little company that had to get startup money from pre-orders or records that they were going to make, um, and they can make a record the records, you know, the classic records made of all the Led Zeppelin, when they can make it sound so fantastic with their equipment that they had, why can't, why couldn't Atlantic do that? 
They had Jimmy Page. They had the vault of the Led Zeppelin, all the Led Zeppelin tapes. They've got the money to get the proper equipment to do it right. But that's not what they chose to do. They chose to make a $25 record that sounds like junk compared to if they would have made it better, maybe it would have cost a little bit more. Maybe it would have cost $29, $29.95 like the classic records did. I don't know. But I tell you what, that's what they should have done. I had one of a fellow leave me a message. He said, hey, it's not, you can't compare. It's not fair to compare the classic records reissue to the new reissue because those classic records reissues, they're going for $150, $200 or more. Well, you know, I bought mine when it was twenty nine ninety five, And I asked him, wouldn't you rather have Atlantic made that record? They could have probably made a better one than Classic did. They've got the wherewithal to make an even better one. Because we know they've got the absolute first edition master tapes those people do. What did Classic Records get? We don't know. But I tell you what, they could have made a better sounding record than the Classic Records. And maybe you had to charge twenty nine ninety five, And they would have had a phenomenal product but they chose not to do it and that's kind of what's going on here too they've got the equipment they've got now and they're thinking hey we put that digital on there people are gonna buy it think it's great because it sounds so awesome and then you bite you take it home man it does sound good but until you compare it to something like this then you know you're getting ripped off right and the reason they're making it is because that's the way their, their, their studios are set up now to do make CDs they're not even set up to make good records okay now we did talk a bit about classic records now this one this aqualung of course you know we're sporting aqualung t-shirt and we've got the, the photo up there just a tall photo because that's what this video is going to be about here okay let's talk about this I had the first time I ever bought this record back in 70 three or four or something. It came out in 72. Um, it was on the Green Chrysalis label. Now originally they came out and I bought one. The next time I bought the record, I bought it in Canada. It was on a brown reprise label. I found it in a record store and it had a nice pebble cover on it. Wow, what a beautiful cover it had on it. And then I found a uh, Green Chrysalis UK press. I bought that. And uh, then I had the, uh, I bought the DCC back in, that was the late 90s, 98, 99 when it came up. The DCC, the Direct Compact Classics, that was Steve Hoffman. And they made the reissue to let the, the cover, the record. But their cover was kind of a shiny cover. Okay? And now, uh, uh, the Canadian first issue on that Brown Reprise, boy, it really had good sound on it. I thought that one really sounded great. And when I compared it to the UK, uh, I don't think I even had that one anymore because I, I had found that DCC one. And that DCC had fantastic sound on it. I really, really loved it. And then I came across this Japanese edition. And they've got, this is, this is very similar now to that Moody Blues record that I've talked about. Every good boy deserves favor. It's a texture cover, very thick. You know, uh, and the thing about this one though, is even on the inside of the gatefold it's textured. Like the Moody Blues, it was smooth paper on the inside. This has even got the texture on the inside of the cover and the outside. And it's 2,000 yen. Warner Pioneer Corporation made the record. It's on the Brown Reprise label. So you know that this is a Japanese first edition. And when I compared the Japanese first edition now to the DCC label, um, the DCC had a little bit better bass. I'll give it its due on that. But as far as the rest of it, I thought this one was a little bit better. And so I, this is the one I kept. And I sold the DCC. Of course, I got a hundred and something dollars for the DCC. People, people are going to buy that because they know it's a good record. But there's still a few of these out there, and you can get a pretty good deal. You can probably pick these up for 
if you look long enough, you're probably out there for $25, $35, something like that. Of course, it doesn't have the OB now. If you find one with that, I think it's it's got a finger point on it, or old rock OB on it. Oh yeah, you're gonna pay $150, $200. That they just want the moon for the for that kind of stuff. And then I found this. And boy oh boy, let me tell you about this. We're gonna talk a little bit about this is the the sleeve that goes on the outside. It's kind of like the little seal that goes on the outside of the record. And we're talking about, if they talk about on the back of this, how they make their record and, and what their process kind of is. And I thought it was really interesting and I wanted to share it with you. I'll just read on here. Of course, they're using this, what they call clarity vinyl. Now, clarity vinyl is pure vinyl. There's nothing added to it at all. And pure vinyl that with nothing added to it is this color. It's a kind of a translucent gray color. Anything, anything pure vinyl is going to be translucent. And if you don't add anything to it, this is exactly the way it is. And all these records, they're only they're one-sided only. No. Because there's a lot of talk about black vinyl and red vinyl and different things like that. So that's what vinyl, and see, so the, the clarity vinyl represents the ultimate in vinyl formulations because it is comprised of over 90% of the highest quality copolymer available, a key component in vinyl pellets used for manufacturing vinyl records. Further, clarity vinyl has no carbon black additive common in vinyl formulations for LPs. Carbon black contains trace minerals, trace metals that become magnetized and cause electronic distortion in cartridges during playback that smears the sound. Okay, so you know they add carbon black to their records and the carbon black, the stuff they add is it's really slippery, smooth. And what it does, it helps the records, they, uh, they, they don't have as much uh, background noise on them usually if they add carbon black. And they last longer because carbon, you know, it's, it's harder and it will make the records last longer if you play them thousands of times or whatever. And if you're not tr tracking properly or whatever. Okay, so what's this thing about that the, it, it's got metals in it and it becomes magnetized? Well, this is really interesting because, you know, Michael Firmer talked about that. He's got a record demagnetizer, and it's like $1,800, and he takes a vinyl record, and he demagnetizes it, and they sound better. And he says, I know it sounds crazy, but that's what happens. And so I could never understand that until I read this, and that's why. And, you know, uh, there's, other, there's another fellow out there. He's got a little magnet thing that he runs over his records, and they're... they're three hundred dollars or so they want for that and they really claim that the records sound better and I was thinking of getting one of those but now I understand what it is that blood those black records they've got trace metals in there and they become magnetized and of course it's it's uh, confusing your magnetic pickup okay and it smears the, the so that's what that's what the formula that's why they're, you're doing it like this okay by taking out the carbon black, Classic Records is able to dramatically reduce the electrical distortion and thus bring more clarity to the playback process, providing a more realistic musical experience to the listener and LP enthusiast. Now we want to talk about the speed. 45 RPM records have long been recognized as providing a higher fidelity musical experience, resulting purely from the cartridge being able to extract more of the nuance from the complex vertical horizontal groove modulations in stereo LPs. <coughs> Excuse me. Further, classic records 45 RPM single-sided pressings dramatically reduce the mechanical resonance created in the cartridge during playback by allowing these resonances to be more fully transmitted and to be absorbed by the turntable platter. Cla classic records clarity vinyl 40 RPM 45 RPM pressings are designed to and manufactured to provide the lowest distortion in every aspect of LP playback, resulting in 
putting the listener as close as the music as possible. So, you know, I read a little bit about this uh, pure vinyl stuff. And the reason that the, the, a lot of the companies don't do it is because this pure vinyl without the carbon black in it, it's hard to do. It's hard to put it into automated presses. It doesn't want to work properly. So that's why these records are all, what does it say right on here? Handmade. 200 gram classic records clarity SV P2 super vinyl profile to handmade. So, yeah, they didn't run it through the machines because that this vinyl doesn't want to work in the, in the machine properly. That's why you, the company, that's why they don't do it. So they had to hand make these records because they wanted to have the best record they could ever make and then put that's why they did that like that. Now, if we want to talk about 45 RPM, you know, that. That basically that cutting head is vibrating. All the vibrations get put in it, and when you get a complex music passage, and it's it's going slower, the all the vib all the stuff is getting crammed into a smaller space, and when you speed it up, now it's getting put into this much space. So it's it's not compressed in there. It's easier to find the information, and you know if you've ever played 45 RPM versus the 33, you know they sound better. But this record in particular now, with all of that being said, all the inf all the stuff we know about how they made the record and everything else, it's like listening to this record for the first time. My son and I, you know, we, we love this record and we listen to it a lot. And we were listening to the Japanese pressing because that's the one we thought was the best. And when you put this on, it's mind boggling how much stuff is there that we've never heard before. Or like Where's those bongos come from? What's up? What's that noise? What's that? Wow! It was just we're looking at each other through the whole playing the record. Every song's like, what's going on? Where's all this stuff coming from? It's just, and you know, uh, they wanted. If you look on eBay, they wanted quite a bit of money for these records. And there was a guy that was selling. He started it out, and so I bid it. I bid on. It. I paid. You know, I paid about less than half of what the other sellers want for it. I got a really good deal on it. That's why I picked it up. It's still quite expensive, but you know, it comes out of the PayPal. But boy, oh boy, I just, you know, I can't express to you how fantastic this record. This is the, this is obviously now the best sounding rock record that I've ever heard. And, uh, you know, they didn't do this. Classic records didn't didn't make a lot of uh, rock records on this. No, they've got some of these Led Zeppelin ones on this stuff too. But you know, they're uh, very, very expensive to get. I'll have to keep my eye on Maybe I can find one that, uh, you know, below a zillion dollar cost level. But we're so, so pleased with that record. And I hope that helps you out understand differences and you know, there's a difference between, uh, what's the difference between a red vinyl record or a blue one and a black one? Well, they're not adding the carbon black. They're taking that pure vinyl and they're, uh, they're not using that, so much of that 90% of that copolymer because uh, you can't run it through the presses, but they use enough of it. It's trans, the translucent records are, are the good ones. And I, like just for a second here, let's look at this. You can remember now, Classic Records put this out, and this is on that red translucent vinyl. Boy, oh boy, did that thing ever sound fantastic. It's one of the best sounding records that I've ever heard. So, now, you know, there's a lot of these, especially a lot of these hard rock, heavy metal bands are putting out a lot of these swirls and different, and who's making the records? You know, that, that's where it boils down to. It's not so much about, is it on black vinyl, or is it red or green? It's who's making the record, because that's kind of like a gimmick. They're making all these really cool swirly uh, rainbows and you know records to sell them because they're kind of like collectible. They're rare, but the sound on them isn't all that great because it's who's making the record. But if the same company now puts it on red and puts it on black, I can just tell you that this one sounds fantastic. I have another Depeche Mode records on the blue translucent vinyl on 45, and it'll knock your socks off the dynamics on it. It's just that the carbon black makes it last a bit longer, and that's why the record companies put it in there. And thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.